Welcome to the HR Community Podcast. My name is Shane O'Neill, founder of Civitas Talent, the HR and HSC recruitment community. Each episode, we will host HR leaders and discuss their journey and discover best practice HR solutions across the HR industry. Whether you're a CEO, HR executive, or operating across the wider HR space, this podcast is for you. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to comment and share your views. Enjoy the episode. Welcome, Denise. Thank you, Shane. Thank you for uh, making time to jump on our uh, HR Community podcast today. My great pleasure. And congratulations, too, on Civitas. It's, uh, oh, thank you. It's an achievement. Good luck. Best of luck with that. Thank you. Thank you. Busy couple of months so far. So um, I'm sure um, you know all about the, the startup and scale up space. So there's a, a long roadmap ahead. But more importantly, um, I thought it'd be good to um, hear a bit more about you and, and your journey and, and uh, you know, where you're coming from, Denise. So did you want to tell me a bit about, um, I guess, who you were, who you are, sorry, what your um, current role is, um, what business you're currently or businesses you're currently working at and tell us a bit more about those. Yes, it'll be my pleasure. So Denise Hanlon, hi everybody. Uh, I am the Chief People Officer, CPO or Chief Party Officer as I like to call it, <laughs> uh, at Janison, which is an educational technology company. So I've just clicked over my six months there. I've passed probation. I'm happy to report. Uh, so, you know, things things are looking up. Yeah. Uh, and I also have my own consulting business, Hanlon HR, which I've had for about 13 years yeah. that I kind of dip in and out of, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, it gives me great exposure to a whole range of different industries and businesses um, through that awesome. consulting. But Janison is where I'm at and I'm loving it. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, and tell us a bit about the journey then, because uh, I hope I'm not going back too far now, but I did look back at sort of where you um, had your earlier careers in, in HR and we're looking at, you know, the bigger public sector firms, the the sort of big global banks. Like, uh, tell us how you, you started off there and, and then decided to move into more of the, the technology and startup space. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, I actually, you're quite right. I actually started with the public sector. Uh, in Newcastle, which is where I'm from. There weren't a huge range of options back then, and it was a while ago, Shane. I'm I'm actually that old. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so my first role was not in human resources or personnel, uh, as it was called back then. I was uh, going to be an accountant, would you believe, of all things. So uh, I have a love of, love of maths and stats, and uh, I still do, but that accounting thing, uh, yeah. yeah fantastically boring for me at least but anyway uh, so that's what I was studying and I took a job with the police service and my first role there was assistant to the police prosecutor wow. uh, just kind of the lawyer for the police and so I spent most of my days in court uh, you know making sure the paperwork was ready and capturing all of the uh, happenings uh, from court matters uh, yeah. accurately and it was such a good grounding, um, to be honest. It taught me a lot. Um, it taught me that, you know, sometimes good people do stupid stuff, but they're still good people. Uh, and, you know, probably, uh, you know, the fact that most people just need some feedback at times mm -hmm. about, you know, what, what, what's the right thing to do and what's not the right thing to do. Sometimes uh, in the legal setting it can be quite pointed feedback, of course, but... Uh, Gave me a real sense of fairness, I suppose, and, you know, the fact that sometimes stuff happens in the past, but the important thing is to focus on the future, and that I carry that with me uh, still today. And uh, when I a couple of years into um, my role, I was actually um, promoted into a supervisory role. So as a ripe old 21-year-old, I was put in charge of two much older people, yeah. And I had no clue, absolutely no clue what it meant to, you know, be the leader of, of uh, a team, albeit a small team. And I guess that's where my develop, uh, interest developed in, you know, what is now called human resources. Uh, really, I, you know, I entered that and um, studied that for quite a while uh, with the view to becoming the best people leader I could be. And I'm still on yeah. that journey. I, uh, that's kind of, that's what I really love about, you know, my work. It just so happens that now I'm leading teams of HR People, yeah, uh, as opposed to you know accountants. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, and, and uh, um, interestingly, like it's been a bit of a journey. Like, tell us a bit about um, that journey in terms of 
the now human resources space? Like, where are the sort of the, the main major changes that you've sort of experienced over the last few years, Denise? Yes. Well, some things have changed. Uh, yeah. Some things haven't changed um, yeah. in, in my experience, and I've had, you know, good good kind of 30 years, I suppose, um, doing this thing. Um, and sadly, some HR functions are still focused on process and policy and, you know, one-size-fits-all mm-hmm. um, approaches to things like performance and engagement. Uh, and sadly, in my view, anyway, you know, some things maybe haven't changed as much as they should um, but uh, a lot has changed, not least of which, of course, is technology. And so, you know, uh, the pandemic has really accelerated uh, thinking about, you know, how people work best, when they work best, uh, where they work best. Uh, and I, I think that's a change for the good, actually. We've, we've had this technology for people to work remotely for a while now, uh, but, you know, some some companies just hadn't really engaged, you know, engaged with it. And the pandemic, you know, for all of its tragedy, uh, has really forced um, HR and, you know, workplaces generally to, you know, value the individual, I suppose, and and create the opportunity for them to work um, such that we get the best from them, which is really what it's all about. 100%, yeah. And like you said, it's all driven through um, ourselves, the humans, and then embracing the technology. Um, I think it's, it's really important. Um, looking at the pandemic, actually, on that topic, um, been a bit of a whirlwind for um, everyone in HR over the last sort of two years. Like, what, what would you say are your, your um, top three key key learns now that we're we're not post pandemic, but hopefully we're we're getting closer to that stage? Yeah, well, I think my learnings aren't necessarily tied to you know uh, COVID and related things I've always held the view that we should treat treat people like grown-ups yeah. you know we all make huge decisions about our lives about homes and family and uh, geography and you know all sorts of decisions and you know um, entering a workplace even mm. though it's now a virtual workplace for many of us um is you know is really um, the opportunity I think for for all HR people at any level, uh, not just kind of HR leaders, but it's really embracing you know all of us as individuals and and trying where we can to ac- accommodate the way people like uh, to work and and where they like to work. Yeah, exactly right. And then in terms of your role or your sort of roles, your many hats. Um, is that a big focus for the business as looking at, you know, um, now we've been through this and now we've obviously set up and started to maintain a, a, a virtual workforce or a hybrid or, or, or a bit more of a um, flexible uh, workforce. Is that the, the current focus now to see where are the other areas that we can continue to, to really develop? Yes, I think so, and I, I think it will continue to play out. And and yeah. at Janison, you know, Janison comes from a um, it's an Australian company. Uh, it's uh, headquartered in Sydney. That's where you know at the moment the majority of our employees are. And you know we're now fully flex, so not and that doesn't mean uh, work three days from home and two days in the office, or you know that we mandate a number of days people need to come into the office because we mm. still have offices. Uh, it, it means choose, you know, uh, the, a way that works for you and the business, of course, mm-hmm. uh, how and when and where you'd like to work. And, uh, you know, we've embraced that fully uh, and it's also helped us, you know, we're working with a limited talent mm-hmm. pool at the moment. The borders are closed uh, and, you know, there are ramifications of that. Um, but the ability to work remotely, virtually, uh, means for us that we can actually, uh, and we have started to geographically um, spread and source talent from outside of, you know, people that just so happen to live, you know, within so many kilometres of, of the head office. So we now, we're only a medium-sized company. We're only 200 employees. Yeah. Now we have people in regional centres like Coffs Harbour and the Gold mm-hmm. Coast and uh, we just employed our first person in Hobart. We've got people in New Zealand, Philippines, Italy, Germany, the US. Uh, but we're only small, right? So yeah. um, that's, I mean, that's hugely exciting for me, uh, I think, to 
get creative, I think, about where we yeah. where we source really good people uh, and, and those shackles, I guess, of the past, you know, maybe maybe aren't around as much anymore. Yeah, which is really interesting, though, Denise, because um, you've obviously touched on it there and I was going to ask you a bit about uh, Genesin and, and sort of what um, the approach will be, but there's a lot of talk at the moment about the, the great resignation or a great opportunity. There's a couple of different terminologies for it, but... Um, like as well as being flexible and and looking outside that sort of um, narrow talent pool, open up um, geographically. What else do you feel um, would be a good approach for companies or or um, like minded HR and recruitment individuals to sort of look at uh, strategically to to try and either retain talent or, or look for new talent in in uh, in the great resignation. Yes, the great resignation. It's uh, getting people and consultants a lot of work, I suspect. And and look, it's you know it's true. And you know, I studied economics for a long time. Uh, we have as we have a, a supply demand uh, issue at the moment. You know, the demand for a limited supply drives prices up. That's that's how it works. Uh, and there are some cashed up companies out there throwing some big money yeah. around. But I've, I've been around and uh, that's unsustainable. You know, it's a race over the longer term. It's a race to the top and that's never sustainable. So, you know, things will settle, the borders will open up, supply and demand will uh, equalise and those companies will find that um, their, their people costs will be perhaps higher than, you know, they'd like them to be and there, you know, there comes cost cutting and redundancies and things like that. So... You know, my, my advice and, and what we're doing, um, be, a, be aware of the market, but but hold the line, you know, hold the line in terms of creating the best possible workplace that you can because for everybody that walks out the door, there's another person that's about to walk in the door uh, and, you know, uh, and that's a good thing, you know, that's a good thing, talent moving around. Same with the HR profession. I'm, I'm sure that, you know, after, over the last two years, um, holding on to a job has, you know, has been important because some businesses sadly um, haven't fared well during the pandemic. Uh, we'll see some movement, but that's, I think that's a good thing, you know, and I think for recruitment recruitment um, professionals, for example, it might actually force a bit more creative thinking about, you know, what talent really looks like as opposed to whether they tick all of the boxes on their CV that, you know, perhaps traditionally has been the approach to finding talent. So uh, hold the line. Yeah. HR folk, uh, a, a great place to work uh, where people are fairly paid, you know, is a hugely attractive uh, proposition. Exactly. I like that. Hold the line. Hashtag hold the line. Hold uh, the line. Hold the line. And, uh, you know, those companies that do kind of uh, throw money at people and then, you know, cut and burn, uh, they'll always have to struggle with the great resignation. Uh, it's it's the... The workplaces that really appeal to the individual, I think that'll that'll really come out of this, you know, well. Yeah, I think so too. And like from a recruitment perspective, I've I've been asked the question more and more about the company's culture, their flexibility. Is it a hybrid model? You know, do I need to stay in the office every day? Those are more important factors to people now than how much money is it paying. Obviously, there's. Um, you know, different different horses for courses. Uh, some are all about the dollars um, as well. But yeah, majority of, of candidates are starting to ask me more about the business, the culture, the long term vision, um, as opposed to the money. Um, and, and look, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Shane, but it's not. Uh, you know, it's a, also a social good, right? Um, uh, there's a, a fellow at our work who um, has two small children, and you know, we're all, we're all working remotely. And he got to see his youngest uh, toddler crawl for the first time. And right. he said uh, it was at 3 o'clock. He even noted the time, right? It was at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He said uh, ordinarily I would have been in the office and I would have missed it. So, yeah. there's, you know, this, there's a huge shift going on at the moment, socially, geographically. Um, we have a person who um, wants to move to Queensland to be closer to her family, and there's absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. Yeah, uh, you know, some really good things are happening. The environment, less cars on the road. Uh, it. It's you know, it's a good time to be around, even so, for us oldies, even for yeah. us oldies. Yeah, yeah. Although uh, 
Um, I do find I, I do miss some of the in-person interactions as well, and and the social side that yes. comes with um, being in, in the office. But um, no, I agree. I think I think most companies are starting to really just sort of tailor their approach so that it, it takes a lot of boxes for people. Just be human. Just treat people like grown-ups. That's uh, <laughs> that's my mantra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, and look, one of the sort of reasons why I wanted to uh, bring you out here as well, uh, Denise, you've obviously got a lot of experience, some of what we discussed. Um, for upcoming HR leaders, um, what kind of advice do you have? Like, What kind of pointers or, or uh, um, suggestions do you have for, for sort of upcoming leaders? Um, world is still a bit sort of crazy and uh, transforming at the moment. Um, we've come from the pandemic. There's a lot of technology around, like um, obviously lots of changes um, in an unpredictable world. Um, any advice you give to some of the upcoming HR leaders that are listening to the to the show? Well, yeah, apart from treating people like grown-ups, um, you know, as you pointed out at the beginning, uh, you know, I've moved through some the public sector. I've worked for some big corporates. Uh, and I love the scale-up mm. environment. I love the opportunity to be creative and, you know, in, in a large part, throw out convention. There's a lot of stuff coming at HR people from lawyers and consultants that said, well, you must do it this way and you have to have this process. It's just not true. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of research out there that suggests that, you know, a lot of the ways that we've traditionally done things around performance, for example, uh, doesn't really motivate people's performance, which is kind of the kind of the goal, really. So, um, you know, when you're new in your career, of course, you're a sponge and you listen, hopefully, and learn. Uh, and then at a certain point in time, if it doesn't make sense, well, you know, try something else. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It's HR, right? We're not splitting right. the atom here. So uh, have a crack, I say, at trying uh, new and different things. Uh, the world is not going to end, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, like that would be my advice. You know, experiment, experiment, and do what works. Do what works for your workplace, rather than what other people are telling you you should do. And and I do get asked the question a lot. Um, again, by some of the upcoming HR leaders that uh, that I do speak with, um, in terms of that scale up environment that you mentioned. Um, because I know it is a little bit different. It, it can be very hands on deck, sometimes very little resources and support around you, especially if it's in a very, you know, first stage startup phase. Like um, what are the kind of learns or what are the kind of, again, advice that you would sort of give anyone candidate wise or, or upcoming HR leaders looking to, to break into the, the scale up startup phase? Out of space? Yes. Um uh, yeah, startups. Startups are a bit different. You know, you, you're absolutely right. It's uh, usually often if they have an HR person, which you know, uh, often they don't yes. for some reason. I don't know. They usually have finance people, not HR people. I've never really understood that. But uh, you know, typically when you're a startup and you're growing, it's about bums on seats and talent and recruitment. You know, and so often uh, people with a recruitment background uh, will be you know, thrust into the, the heady role of head of HR or head of people and culture, but essentially it's recruitment and, and you know, that, that, that's okay. That's what's required at that point in time. Then when you're in the scale-up environment, and, and I typically work for and with organisations that scale organically and inorganically. So uh, Janison, for example, um, is acquisitive. We're looking to buy companies and grow that way as well as organically that's a different kettle of fish I mean that's you know when you're bringing cultures together uh when you have to think about you know how to put your arms around sometimes a, a workforce that's just doubled overnight uh and you think about com ways to communicate um you know between the two I mean that's a different mindset you know and I, I don't know that I have any advice other than you know get as much experience as you can but but you know, Janison's 200 employees and what's working now for us won't necessarily work for us if we're 400 or 500 or 1,000 or 2,000. Uh, uh, and, you know, keeping that in mind, I suppose, uh, the old cliche about, you know, processes or, uh, you know, that are scalable yeah. uh, sounds trite, but it actually, I've been with an organisation that went from 200 people to 2,500 within a couple of years and, uh I know firsthand, 
you know, uh, what it's like when you have, you know, manual kind of processes uh, in the early stage that work and then when they don't yeah. work at all. But it's it's a great space to be in. I absolutely love it, absolutely wow. love the scale-up environment. It's, it's really exciting and it teaches you to prioritise because when you're moving that fast, you don't have time to design the best possible HR process that makes all of the HR people hugely excited with themselves but uh, might not be exactly what the business needs. Yeah, amazing. I love that. And you've obviously worked at organisations where you've, you've, you've seen it grow and flourish, as you said, inorganically or, or organically. You've probably come in to, to fix some of the, the structure or processes at times. Um, how important do you think it is to get HR in at those early days of, of the startup? Um, because I agree with you. I always feel like um, the, a lot of startups um, or even a lot of scale-ups end up, um, you know, they sort out the finance, they sort out the marketing, the tech, back in front end, and sort of HR comes in just as they're they're getting to that 50, 100 mark um, and they want to double in size in the next year. And you've heard it all before, but um, how important it is to, to get HR early and, and how early do you think companies should be exploring that? Yeah, well, of course, I'm going to say hugely important, yeah. uh, right? I don't understand that and I see it time and time and time and time again where, you know, uh, an organisation of 100 people might have five, five people in finance and nobody or maybe a payroll person kind of doing the HR stuff. And I, and, and I get that, you know, there are financial limitations when you're growing, of course. Um, I just never really wrap my head around why accounting numbers, and I come from that background, yeah. uh, is deemed, you know, uh, a place that you'd put more investment than uh, getting there early in a, in a company's growth phase uh, from a from a people perspective and really starting to work and build on something that's you know amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we may need more CEOs and uh, XHR yeah. people starting businesses, perhaps. Hundred percent. Yeah, that could be the next the next shift. It could the next be. Yeah. 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 I think. I mean, I think the pandemic's really highlighted the value that that the profession can add to a business. Um, I, I really feel that. So I, I hope it's a pivotal moment, you know, for, for our profession because um, without people there's no business. Yeah. So, uh, and you can have all the finance, you know, uh, accountants in the world. No offence to my finance friends, by the way. Uh, you can have all the accountants in the world but it's not going to run you a business if you don't have the people who, uh, you know, love it there and, and want to give their best. I love it. Amazing. Well, look, I'm mindful of time today. Uh, I know you're very busy. So I just have a couple of quick sort of short answer uh, questions. Oh, yes, you sent me those and I didn't look at the list. All right, so this will this will be definitely uh, improvised. That's all right. That's all right. We'll work through them. Uh, so <laughs> most influential person? Oh, blimey. Well, you know I'm a karaoke singer, right? So does it have to be professional or can it be? Does it have to be professional? Whoever thought of you and influences you. <laughs> oh, it had to be Aretha Franklin. Yeah, uh, love no it. question about it. Uh, the Queen of Soul, sadly no longer with us, but, uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, I love listening to Aretha sing. sing. I can't go anywhere near her, but I, I give it a good go. Yeah, give it a crack. <laughs> it a crack. I love it. Um, best lesson learned? Best lesson. Well, this will be oh, uh, the one that comes to mind is professional. I remember when I was um, in my late twenties and I had a decent job. I'd received this kind of huge promotion, and which I was a bit overwhelmed by. But anyway, I had this boss who was very senior, and it was in the police service. And I remember they were um, running an investigation which caused uh, called for an international phone call. And this yeah. is pre tech. You know, this is pre all the technology we have today. And the rules were that this very senior person had to seek approval to make an international call because they were pretty expensive in those days. And uh, I remember him telling me that when he was a 16-year-old, he used to work in a bank and part of his job was to close up the bank at the end of the day. Yeah. He, he did it all by himself uh, and he was trusted to close a bank, which was full of money, uh, as a 16-year-old, yet as a, you know, perhaps late 50-year-old uh couldn't be trusted to make an international phone call. That, that, that has stuck with me for the last, no. you know, 25 years. Uh, yeah, treat people like grown-ups. Love it, love it. Um, office, working from home or hybrid? 
for me personally. Yeah. Uh, mostly from home. You can see my little setup here. I don't know if you can see my uh, accomplices in the yeah, I don't see the karaoke microphone. <laughs> no, I that, that is a wig, though, but we won't go into that. Um, no, my little puppies are here somewhere. Yeah, I, I've got a good setup at home and I, I uh, working from home works for me, but I'm a very social creature, so I love going into the office and uh, don't mind a tipple uh, or seven either. So uh, yeah. hi- hybrid for me. 100%. Um, who do you inspire? <laughs> Probably nobody. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good question. I've had some good feedback over the years about yeah. um, from people that, um, you know, have been, have been in my team and I now see some people that, you know, used to be quite early in their career really smashing goals out there in in many of them, head of, head of HR roles. Uh, so I don't know if I inspire them, but I've certainly helped them along the way and, and they've stolen quite a few of my ideas. So good on them. Love it, love it. Well, maybe when a few more people listen to this, that list will uh, will grow. Um, what frustrates you? Oh, it frustrates me. Well, you won't be surprised after this conversation, but uh, unnecessary bureaucracy. I mm-hmm. absolutely hate it, hate it. Even in, in even in my personal life, you know, it's late at night and you're sitting at the red traffic light, light and there no, there's no traffic around. Yeah. Uh, that drives me bonkers. Why? Why? Why can't I just go through the red traffic light? I've checked left and right. Yeah. Why? Ready to go. Ready to go. Could be, it could be an unpopular position, though, so I'll just keep that to myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, this would be a good one. Um, how do you keep mentally focused? Well, you're assuming I am mentally focused. Exactly, yeah. So I'm, and, just um, I'm, not conv- I'm not convinced of that. <laughs> uh, uh, how, how would you hypothetically keep focused? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a great planner. I like mm-hmm. to plan things, uh, and and so you know, think having some time to think about you know what, what's this going to look like in twelve months and two years and three years. I can't I can't quite wrap my head around twenty years, uh, but uh, you know, so so that keeps me focused. But I also do a bit of sport, or, you know, yeah. in terms of kind of well being and mental health. I am um, I'm a golf tragic at the moment. Um, yeah. Absolute tragic. I was even watching a video of a golf shot before this conversation, Shane. That's how bad it is. So uh, was, was it the? Uh, I'm not a big golfer. Was it the uh, Australian guy that's just won? Yes, Cam Smith. I said Cam Smith. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that that gets me out of the house and out of the office, and you know, doing some walking and uh, focusing on that little white ball and trying to get it in the in the cup. Love it, love it. If you could have dinner with just one person, who is it, Denise? But you don't have to say me. Well, present company excluded. Yeah, yeah. I'd have to look. I'd have to revert to my entertainment, you know, uh, world. I'd have to be somebody like Beth Midler, you know, somebody who's sassy, and uh, I could learn a lot from. And uh, and we could have a sing afterwards after a few wines. So uh, yeah. Yeah, let's say Beth Midler. It's not particularly, <laughs> uh, you know, erudite, but. Uh, yeah, she'd be great fun to dine with. I think so. I think so too. Uh, finally, um, I know it's a bit of a, it's well, this question is a bit of a question with uh, international travel, if, if that's your jam, but ideal retreat or holiday experience, where could you see yourself? Where could I see myself? Well, I'll tell you where I'm planning to see myself. Yeah. Uh, uh, on King Island, which is a little island off the coast of Tasmania, uh, on a golf trip with my buddies. Uh, oh, that's, 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 our, that's our plan for a couple of months' time. Fingers crossed that Where's that comes off. Uh, that's probably the most uh, imminent, but uh, otherwise it'd be South America somewhere. I've been to yeah. a little part of South America. There's lots more to see, so uh, I would love to do that. I, awesome. I can say hello and can I have two beers in Spanish, and I figure that's enough. That's all you need. Well, I don't think that's enough beers, but it's enough for it. I'm too shy. Good Awesome. Well, look, that is all from me. Thank you so much for your time. That was amazing, Denise. And uh, I'll talk to you very soon. It's my pleasure, Shane. Thanks very much. No worries at all. Thank you for tuning in to the HR Community Podcast. Remember to like and subscribe and share your views and comments below. This podcast was brought to you by Civitas Talent the HR and HSC recruitment community. Whether you're a candidate looking for a new role or organization looking to secure brand new talent for your team, please get in touch with us today. Thank you.